Did you have a good time tonight? I had a wonderful time, yes. It was a really great audience and uh, the room is beautiful. I'd never been here before. It was really nice. Uh, when did you first start writing song and uh, what prompted you to do so? That's a good <laughs> question. I, I was 13 when I wrote my first few songs. I think I wrote three songs and the prompt was that I was an awkward kid that was too shy to talk to anybody about anything and I had something that I needed to have an outlet for. Uh, that it was just a, I was going through a hard time, you know, I'm sure every 13 year old goes through a hard time, but I, I wasn't very good at talking to anybody about anything, so I used music and songwriting as that outlet. Do you have like a favorite place or favorite time to write? I tend to like writing... I like writing in mornings a lot, and I like writing in corners. It doesn't really matter what the room is, but I really like kind of tucking away in the corner, uh, whether it's a bedroom or a church or a, you know anything. So how do you deal with writer's block? I try not to think about it very much. I feel like it tends to happen where it's a flow, you know, sometimes you have a lot of songs coming out all together and sometimes you have a really dry period and uh, I try not to push it too much, you know? I haven't had any blocks too long where I feel like, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna write again. So I just try and go with what naturally happens. Okay. Uh, what song of yours do you consider to be like the most successful and why? Most successful? I think I've had the most response with a song called You Will Love This Song. It seems like, well at least on, you know, online and people asking for it at shows. And I don't really know why people respond to the song. It's funny because you would think that people would respond to something that's more vague so that they can identify it with it more, but that song is so specific and it's it's all these little tiny experiences that there's no possible way that everybody, that anybody would be able to identify with each little detail of it. But somehow, maybe the sentiment of it or that it's really open and vulnerable, it seems like a lot of people really uh, identify with it. And, um, and all, you know, I, I probably get requests for that song more often than any others and I've, you know, people have sent me videos on YouTube of them covering it, which is really cool. <laughs> this is my own favorite also. It's your favorite Yeah, it is. So I was disappointed at the end of the show. I was like, she didn't sing it and then you did. It's funny, sometimes I, I usually try and sing whichever ones I'm feeling the most at the time. And actually, I, I was happy that somebody asked for it at the end because when I when I started singing it, I was like, oh yeah, I like singing this song. <laughs> but I, yeah, I don't know why I didn't have it in my set. Uh, do you have any memorable experience uh, that you can share from the tour or yeah. a specific country or a specific show? It was really nice. It was my first time going to Austria this time and we played our first show in Austria was in this town called Ebensee which is a small town and we got off the train we're taking trains everywhere for this tour and we got off the train and uh, walked down these dark streets and walked down another dark street and then down a dark alley and found uh, you know a side door to this place and it's like where are we we had no idea and it's this place called Kino and it ends up being a beautiful theater inside with amazing sound and just the greatest audience. And it was just this tiny town in Austria. Like there was, I, I love things like that when you don't expect something to be, uh, you know, you expect something to be one way and then it really outdoes you and like all the people were amazing and the venue was beautiful and it was just a really nice experience and very unexpected. <laughs> What's coming up next for you? Okay, so yeah, we're going to Nancy and then we have a few days off and then we have a show in uh, Brno, Czech Republic and then a show in Cologne, uh, Germany and then we go back to New York and for the next 
I guess for the next three months or so, maybe four months, I'm just going to be writing a lot and starting to record demos. And in the spring, I get to record an album, which I'm really, really excited about, uh, with this producer named Jakir King, who he just won a Grammy for you know, the last Kings of Leon record, and he just did Norm John's last record, and he's he recorded my favorite record of all time, which is Tom Waits' Mule Variations. And uh, so I'm really excited to work with him. So I'm just going to be writing a lot and getting prepared for that. And then we'll we'll record in Kentucky in March <laughs> okay. and uh, release the record in the summer.